It's Sunday and it's time to talk some NFL. There may not be games on TV, but we can talk about NFL card prices. And to do that, a special sports influencer is joining me today on Sports Card Investor. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. I hope you are having a wonderful weekend. It is Sunday, and Sunday means it's time for some NFL football. Well, not really. There's no NFL on TV. There's no sports at all on TV, but I can bring a little bit of NFL to your life today because I am bringing on a special guest and we are going to talk NFL. We're going to talk about the NFL draft and cards to invest in, players who came out of the NFL draft who may be investable, as well as players across the NFL and the NBA who are worth a look from an investment standpoint. The special guest that I'm bringing on today, his name is Brandon Zingali. He is a sports influencer, someone who is uh, followed by hundreds of thousands of people on Instagram. They like him for his combination of knowledge of sports, particularly Cleveland and Ohio sports. So we're gonna have a talk about Baker Mayfield. Um, and uh, also the fact that he mixes comedy in with his sports. It's pretty cool. So we've got a good episode. But first, I got to show you this. I just got my hands on this guy. This is the new mosaic. This is a blaster box. These are very hard to find right now. Um, I know some of you have probably been out at Walmart stores hunting for these, hopefully staying six feet away from all the other shoppers, wearing a mask, Please be safe. I did not go to a Walmart store to go hunt for those. Um, I did buy, however, that blaster box on eBay because I'm going to be opening up that blaster box along with all of these other boxes and giving all the cards away to my members on Wednesday. Wednesday of this week is my next members only card break. And I'm excited to throw some mosaic into the mix because I haven't opened up mosaic yet. So I want to open it up and I want to give all of those cards away to my members along with this beautiful impeccable football. First off the line, I'm excited to go Kyler Murray on card auto RPA hunting with my members Wednesday night. And if you join my membership program between now and Wednesday night, you will be in on the fun and have a chance to win your spot to break all of these cards completely for free for all of my members. All you have to do is join my membership program. Go to my website, sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership button in the main menu bar. Go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the membership button. Okay. Let's get into the Sunday conversation with the sports influencer extraordinaire, Brandon Zingali. Uh, Brandon's going to come on the show. We're going to have a great conversation. Sit back, grab a coffee, and enjoy our talk about the NFL and the NBA. Hey, Brandon, welcome to Sports Card Investor. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you here. So a big Cleveland sports fan, a big Ohio State fan. What, what, has, what has life been like in Cleveland in the post LeBron era? Um, well, it's been unfortunate. Um, <laughs> as, as you know, um, it's, it's tough being a Browns fan, but um, I mean, Indians were getting there at, at one point, but uh, seemed to be declining a little bit. So um, we still have our hopes though. So I've got this little uh, Brown zombie to represent kind of how we've been playing over the past 15 years. So, um, but, but hopefully things, things, things start panning out. We'll see. So let's, we're going to get into your background in a minute, but let's start actually right there. Since we're on the topic of the Browns, yeah. what do you think the, the outlook is for Baker Mayfield? People who are holding Baker Mayfield football cards, which there are a lot of people out there who are now, they're now kind of tense, right? Uh, you know, after, after last season, what do you say to those people? I say, hold on to them for now, because I mean, I, I don't think we're going backwards. I think that, I mean, I think he'll pull through. Um, I think we got the offensive weapons that we needed on the line, especially in the draft. So I think, I mean, he had, he had the bad season last year and I, and I, I think we're going to make baby steps forward. And I think, I think everybody should hold on to those cards. Yeah, they, he was one of the hottest players in the off season last year. Him and Sam Darnold were probably yeah. the two hottest players in the off season. And, and, 
I was at the National Sports Card Convention last summer uh, in Chicago, and people were on a hunt for Sam Darnold cards and Baker Mayfield cards throughout the National Sports Convention floor. And um, both of those guys, it was like, you know, it, the sophomore breakout that everyone thought they were going to have. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I think people should, should still have some hope in them, at least. Um, I, I think they're going to turn it around. I mean, it's, I say this every year, though, as a Browns fan, but I think the likability of, of Baker, and I think that's the reason why, why his cards, cards still remain, remain high. So. And who else, is there anyone else on the Browns who's worth investing in from a football card standpoint? Now, obviously, most, most of the time, people are, are mainly investing in quarterbacks. So we've already covered that with Baker. But is it, obviously, they've got, they've got Odell Beckham Jr., you know, who is, who is one of the rare wide receivers that has enough cachet where you could invest in his cards and see, you know, and the prices do have potential to rise or fall. Um, but is there is it is it him? Is there anyone else? Is Nick Chubb investable? What are what are your thoughts on the other players? Yeah, so I, I've actually been investing a lot in Nick Chubb. Um, I think I mean he had a breakout season last year. I mean he's each year he's progressing. So I would say continue to invest in Chubb. I honestly would would avoid any other Browns. Um, I, obviously, I, we just signed Austin Hooper. Tight ends really you're not really going to get much value unless it's Gronk. Um, welcome back, Gronk. But um, really, our, our wide receiver core, I really don't don't see much value um, in the near future here. So, do you guys have Jarvis Landry still? Is he still on the team? Yeah, we do. Um, I actually, we, when I'm when I'm browsing for cards, I see a lot of Jarvis, but I actually don't have any Jarvis cards. I I, I kind of avoid him. Um, he's a likable guy, but I'm, his cards really, I mean, it's there's really no investment there for me. He has been. He has sat on my for some reason every year in fantasy football. I seem to end up with Jarvis Landry. And every year I seem to think, you know, before he was with the Dolphins and there was every year, there were all these preseason stories about how this guy is an amazing first round type talent and he's going to have this amazing breakout and every year. And then he goes to Cleveland and then I bought into it again. I bought into it again. I'm like, okay, he's going to be lining up opposite of Odell Beckham Jr. So everyone's going to be, all the defense is going to be paying attention to Odell. So Jarvis Landry is going to get all these catches. I bought into it. Never pans out. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a PPR guy, um, but, but the stat, I mean, the stats are there, but they're not there, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah. it's not, I don't think it's enough. So. It's not enough. It's not enough. I mean, he, he, he has, yes, he has some level of production, uh, but, but, but not enough to get my fantasy football team excited and certainly not enough to get sports card collectors or investors excited because if you're going to be investing in wide receiver, you've really got to see, you know, this breakout, you know, breakout occur. Yeah, it's got to be um, your Michael Thomas, your Julio Jones, those type of guys. For sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, let's step back for a second, Brandon, and uh, your background. So you are you have built one of the largest social media followings that is really a sports personality could have. I mean, you've got hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, and we were just talking. I thought kind of the background on on how that happened was was kind of interesting. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so I got my start on Vine, the uh, six-second video app, uh, rest in peace Vine. Um, it's kind of like the child of my development here. Um, so I started creating six-second videos there, um, kind of put comedy mixed with sports, which you don't see a lot of on social media, um, and then kind of worked with brands such as uh, ESPN. Uh, they took me to the NBA Finals, worked with them in ABC. Um, and then once that app started dying, I kind of transitioned those followers over to Instagram and still built that same type of content for my followers. Cool. Well, that, that's a that's a good transition to make. Um, and so, how do how do people look at you? They look at you as this kind of crazy Cleveland sports fan, or do they look at you as this you know kind of football prognosticator? What? How, how do you think you're viewed? I think maybe a little bit of both, with with some humor in there. I mean, some people come to my page for the sports content. Um, a lot of diehard Browns fans. Some are there for for the comedy. So I think you get a little bit of uh, all of those things. Cool. And I'm sure the audience, and I'll put your link to your Instagram in my show notes, but just go ahead and shout it out here just so the audience can give you a quick follow. Yeah, it's um, at Brandon Zingali. Uh, Zingali is Z-I-N-G-A-L-E. And feel free to send me anything, guys. Message me. I, I typically respond. So that, and by the way, that that is impressive for having as many followers as you do, because I can tell you that at Sports Card Investor, we have a, a small fraction of the followers right now that you that you uh, have yourself. 
but we get bombarded with Instagram messages and we appreciate each and every single one of them and we try our best to read and respond to each and every single one of them, but we only have a fraction of the followers that you do. So I can imagine what that experience must be like. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, being quarantined, there's really not much to do but collect cards and, and respond to people on social media, so. Hey, I tell you what, that is, it, it, ain't that the truth, right? I mean, the the there's not much to do in the quarantine besides for collect cards. I mean, that the sports card market is just, the month of April has been an absolutely incredible month for the sports card market. And of course, people who have been watching my videos from earlier this month have seen me talking to dealers and giving stats and just about how much all the cards are going crazy. Um, and what volume's like. It's really, really impressive. But, you know, I think I think that's it. We're home, we're collecting, we're doing what we love to do. Um, and speaking of that, I know sports cards were a passion for you as a kid, like a lot of people, something you kind of got back into. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, growing up maybe from ages 10 to 15, collecting cards. And um, usually when you're that young, you've, you've got your parents buying these cards for you. So I used to trade a lot with my friends. And then, I mean, now being... 30 years old and collecting over the past year, I think it's totally different. And just being able to, to buy what you want um, in the cards and then kind of just investing and thinking, okay, who's going to pan out here. And I mean, it's just the nostalgia is there. It's just, I, I just love it. Do you ever think to yourself, like your younger self would think that your older self was so damn cool? I would think so. Yeah. But not as cool, cool as I would say. So <laughs> <laughs> I look at some of these cards that I can buy now and I'm like, Man, if I could go back and show this card to my 10-year-old self, my 10-year-old self would be freaking out that I own this card. You know, it's, it's uh, pretty cool. I've got dreams like that. It's like, I, I don't have any LeBron rookies. And being from Cleveland, I don't understand why I don't have any from my childhood. And I still have cards from my childhood that I'm going through. And I mean, I've got some, some worth there, but I, I, can't, I can't believe I don't have any LeBron rookies. Yeah, that was a childhood fail. You need to you needed to be yelling at your ten year old self for not, or I guess a little older than ten, but you need to be yelling at your at your what maybe thirteen year old self for not buying LeBron rookie cards back when you could have got them for pretty cheap. Yep, two thousand three. I need to go back in time. Yeah, seriously. So speaking of LeBron, since we're on the topic, how obviously you followed him for many years very closely when he was in Cleveland. What do you think the out, the outlook is right now for the Lakers? And actually, do you think we're going to see basketball back on TV, first of all? And if so, what are you expecting to see from Le LeBron and the Lakers and, and the playoffs in general this year? Yeah, I think uh, to a certain point, we'll see it. Um, I mean, whether that's uh, inclusive, whether it's isolated. Um, I hope, I hope Silver does a job and we, we see some basketball and um, I mean, the Lakers are pushing for that championship. They're playing, they were playing really well. So, I mean, I don't think anybody in the West can beat them. Um, I honestly think if it, if it starts back up, you're going to get that Giannis uh, LeBron matchup that everybody wants. And that's just going to boost those sales in their cards. I think that's probably where we're headed and what a finals that would be. I mean, how great that would be. I mean, it's just, I, 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 I really hope we get the NBA going again because, man, the Bucks lakers finals and the star power. I mean, you'd have the two captains of the All-Star game yeah. going head-to-head -head against each other in the NBA finals. Um, and, you know, that in the All-Star game actually was fairly competitive there at the end. So the, I can't only imagine how the finals are going to be. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think we need that. I mean, not only as sports fans, but card investors. So, Yeah, oh, 100%. We do. Yeah, it... it and I and and I I'm still very optimistic on the sports card market. I'm still very bullish because I do believe we're going to get sports back. I, there are some people that don't, and you'll see people in my YouTube comments right now saying, "No, there's going to be no sports this year. It's not going to happen. They're going to cancel everything." And I, of course, you know, look, I'm not a health expert. I don't have a crystal ball, but what I know is that money speaks, and that people like money, and players like money, and owners like money, and TV likes money. And uh, I just think there's so much revenue at stake here, you know, for every sports league that there's just like to, to, to miss out on the opportunity to have a playoffs where you could have a Giannis versus LeBron in the finals and the TV ratings that would create. Even if you have to do it in empty stadiums, even if all the games have to be played in the same stadium, like I, I'm confident they're going to find a way to get this done. Yeah, whatever caliber they need to get it done by, they, they will get it done. So everybody remain hopeful. For sure. So let's talk about uh, investments on the Cleveland Cavaliers. So, you know, Colin Sexton was a pretty hot guy last season. He's maybe kind of cooled off a little bit. What, what are your thoughts on him? What are your thoughts on maybe the other Cavs players? Um, 
I've been collecting, uh, I like uh, Porter Jr. I like yeah. uh, uh, Darius Garland. So, um, you know, I mean, you never know. It's, it's easy to invest in those guys cheap and then it's, it's low risk. So I've been investing a lot in those guys. Um, I know my, my brother, he collects cards too. My brother-in-law, they've been, they've been investing high in Porter Jr. So. That's, you know, that's an interesting uh, point you just made. That's something that, you know, the audience should think about. Um, commonly, I, I, you know, when I talk about cars on the show, I often talk about kind of the big name guys because those are the guys that have the most transaction volume, the most movement, the most interest, all that type of stuff. But their cards are also the most expensive. And if you invest heavily into, let's say, a Ja Morant or a Zion Williamson, and Zion has, you know, a few more knee injuries and he's never quite, you know, he never really, his career never amounts to a whole heck of a lot. You've now sunk a ton of money in a player who, you know, never, never was able to, to realize that money back for you. Um, but if you take a flyer on some cheaper guys, like you mentioned Darius Garland, like he's a rookie that honestly isn't getting a whole lot of attention. He's kind of, you know, maybe he was getting a little bit more attention at the beginning of the year, but he's like, he's kind of way down the pecking order in terms of this year's rookie class. And you could scoop up lots of his card for very, very inexpensive. And if you're wrong, then the cards that you didn't pay a lot of money for become pretty much worthless but he didn't pay a lot of money for him to begin with. If you're right, and if you really are right, then obviously the multiple of what you could get on a player like that, or as you said, Porter Jr., um, there's a lot of upside there. Uh, there's a lot of risk, obviously. A lot of chance is going to go to zero, but maybe not a ton of financial risk, yet a lot of upside that it could bring. Right. I mean, there's there's minimal financial risk with those guys. I mean, think about think about Tom Brady. Okay, let's, let's go back to when he was drafted in the seventh round. Imagine if you invested in that seventh round pick. I mean, you're, you're barely spending any money. Look at what you would have now. So. That is true. Now, I will caution everybody, though. The flip side of that is look at if you had invested in every seventh round pick throughout every NFL draft. Right. Yes, yeah. you would have, yes, you would have hit Tom Brady. Yes, you would have hit Tom Brady. But you would have lost 99% of the others. And, and while each one of them individually was a very cheap investment, the cumulative nature of all of them would, would start to go up, right? And so, and obviously you wouldn't really truly invest in every pick because you're really yeah. only going to focus your investment on quarterbacks and maybe some receivers and that type of thing. But there are a lot of quarterback busts. Even if you said like, I'm going to buy every quarter, I'm always going to buy every quarterback who's drafted, let's say, in the third round and below because their card prices are never going to be very much money. So I'm just going to buy all of them and hope that one of them turns into the next Tom Brady. There's still a lot of quarterbacks that are drafted in the third round and below. So you would spend a fair amount of time and money collecting various guys. But then again, maybe it's worth it because the one example of Brady, I mean, that's a, you know, probably like a thousand X or a 10,000 X return. Uh, you know, based on what you originally would have paid for that card when he was drafted. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure we'll get into the draft here, but I've been kind of doing the same, um, not really seventh round guys, but kind of, kind of looking at um, different depth charts and seeing, okay, who, who recently got drafted, um, who has the best upside and best chance to start and I'll buy low in those quarterbacks. Yeah. And that's, and that's a good, that's a good way to go. Um, so obviously this year's draft, class, you know, the only cards that are out of them right now are their cards in the college uniforms. One of the disadvantages you have as a sports card investor is if you have a strong feeling on a guy early, but the cards of that guy you really want to buy and invest in are going to be, you know, his prism or his optic or his national treasures. Those aren't coming out till we're in the season and, and, and actually very late in the season in some of the cases, you know, a national treasures is coming out after the season's over. Um, or an optic is coming out right at the end of the season, like in December, right? So um, it's 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 sometimes, unfortunately, it can be a little bit hard to say like I want to invest in this guy because I think he's going to surprise people this year. But then, but if he's a rookie, you're like, well, I can't I can't really invest in him. I'm, I've got to buy some of his college cards or some of the early sets that come out, which aren't really as valuable. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna, you're not going to get a, uh, a huge return on those those college cards. Um, I mean, but if you look like Drew Locke, Daniel Jones, I mean, a lot of their Leafs and uh, their their draft cards actually actually are selling for a lot more than I assume what people bought them for uh, when they first came out. So yeah, it is tough. Um, it's more of a kind of a quick uh, 
quick sale on those. But um, I mean, if they pan out, I mean, you never know. I mean, I know a lot of people, I mean, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, I mean, people are still buying a lot or paying a lot for those, those uh, rookie cards. Yeah. That, yeah, that is, that is, that is true. You can take a flyer on some of those guys. So since we're on the topic, who are some of the guys, who are some of the guys who this year, the draft class, the 2020 draft class, the guys who were just drafted this past week, who are some of the guys who you're maybe thinking about who maybe, you know, maybe, maybe others aren't. Um, so some of the guys I've, I've actually sold a few of them. Um, I bought a lot of, uh, Lynn Bowden jr cards. Uh, he's just a fun player. He's kind of like Taysom Hill. Uh, he can do pretty much anything. Um, so I've been investing a little bit in him, uh, in low numbered cards. Um, but I made, I made four times my, uh, my investment on uh, a few of those cards. Um, uh, other guys I like, um, from the draft quarterback wise, uh, Steve Montez. I think he, he could be somebody who's, who's got some potential. Um, obviously Burrow to, uh, um, but Jordan Love as well, I think. I think it's kind of the same situation when, when the Packers drafted Rodgers and they prepped him um, having Favre. So I think that's kind of the same situation there. So I think Jordan Love could, be, could definitely have some upside in this league. Well, here's, here's a tip I would have for everybody on Jordan Love. Just don't buy any of his cards for probably at least a year because here's the deal, right? He is going to kind of get forgotten about. He is going to end up in a backup role for at least a couple of years, maybe longer. But he's, you know, he, he may, he's going to maybe be like a Garoppolo when Garoppolo, you know, sat behind Brady for quite some time. Um, he's probably going to be in that boat. And, and so there's no rush to buy his cards. In fact, you would, I, I think you would hurt yourself by rushing out to get a bunch of his cards earlier in the season because you're going to be paying some premium prices. The first ones that are coming out of the boxes, I would just sit on him and just let people forget about him. Wait until the off, off season of next year. People aren't even going to remember his name come, you know, you know, a year and a half from now uh, as, as the season, not this season, but the following season's going on. And Aaron Rodgers is still the quarterback. So if, if there's actual long-term value there in having Jordan Love, which there very well could be, buy them at that sneaky moment when everyone else has completely forgotten that he exists because he's never seen a football field in the, let's say, the two years at that point he's been in the NFL. I mean, the NFL is crazy. I mean, you never know. I mean, somebody gets hurt. I mean, especially uh, with Rodgers' track record with that knee. But, I mean, you never know when, when guys, I mean, they, the teams think they're ready and then they get thrown in there and then they perform. So it, it is going to have to be that sweet spot, though. You're right, where we're okay, that, that sneaky spot where you can buy those cards. Yeah, I mean, you do, there is always the injury case, you're right. And, you know, this past year, I did a show early in the season and I said, buy Teddy Bridgewater because Drew Brees is older. And I said, buy Mason Rudolph because because uh, Big Ben is older. And I said, buy, buy Kyle Allen because um, Cam Newton is older and injury prone and sure enough. So that could happen here. However, um, I... I don't think, you know, you could have an injury situation. I don't think you're going to see the Packers just benching Rodgers because he has a bad game. Like that's, it's not like the, it's not like the situation in New York where the Giants were kind of eager to get, to move past Eli and Eli was past his prime. And so they finally, you know, they decided to make the switch, right? In this case, especially with all the negative blowback that the Packers have gotten from drafting a quarterback. Um, I, I mean, I, I doubt you're going to see, I think the only way you'd see him on the field, um, it, honestly, in the first couple of years is if Rodgers actually goes down with an injury. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. So, but but he definitely could make an interesting long-term investment. So that's, I mean, that's definitely definitely a guy to be thinking about buying at kind of a sneaky time in the future. I mean, I, I, I don't think people should be buying, I mean, if you're, if you're going to buy these, these prism cards, these leaf cards, try to get a deal on them. I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing. So, I mean, I've, I mean, just this past week, I made, made a good amount of profit off of uh, what I re uh, originally bought. So, I mean, just be smart with it. I would say um, if you're going to be try to try to be sneaky uh, for the short term, at least. Um, yeah. Just, just be smart. So. Yeah. And the prism and, and, and I would also recommend if you're buying up the, you know, prism draft picks product or, or the leaf, you know, the leaf college products, you're also going to want to probably try to get out from underneath those products before the products come out, you know, later in the summer, early in the fall, where players are in their NFL jerseys. Right. Um, and so that just another thing to think about. We've seen that repeatedly with the draft picks products over the years that 
um, you know, once the pro cards start to come out, that the, there's interest lost in the college cards as of that point in time. But right now, as you said, it can be a fun thing to scoop up some guys and try to kind of flip and find, you know, find kind of creative ways to um, uh, to make some dollars on those types of cards right now. Yeah, yeah, those cards are definitely a short-term game. Uh, yeah. Short-term game there, yeah, so. Very neat, very neat. Anyone else... Um, Anyone else other than Jordan Love? I know you had mentioned, uh, like, uh, I think the running back from Ohio State, you had said you thought that he kind of slipped down in the draft and could be could be maybe kind of a surprise pickup uh, this year for some people. Yeah, I mean, I, I could be a little biased. Got him right behind me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm surprised that that I thought he was going to be a top top two, at least top three running back off the board. I'm surprised that he, that he slipped five. I mean, those top five running backs are all good, but – um, I just think he's kind of like a, a Zeke type player. I mean, being at Ohio State and being in that that same type of offense, I think I think he's very explosive. And I, and I think, um, especially being in that explosive Baltimore offense, I think he stays healthy. I think he's going to have a great career. Yeah, I, I it could be an interesting one to watch. I mean, Ohio State always puts out you know great talent. They've always got great talent on the roster. Um, you know, not enough talent to typically beat the Gators in any type of championship game, uh, <laughs> football or basketball. But you know, they've they've got good they got good talent for that you know for that region of the country, right? Nice. <laughs> I got to get it in there. You know, the uh, explain to me why since we're on the topic, explain to me why why the insistence over the word the before Ohio State University because you know the rest of the country can't stand that, right? Do you know that? It, that's that's exactly why. Well, you got to keep doing it. Annoy everyone. I bet it makes Michigan fans just just absolutely want to pull their hair out every time they hear that. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> um, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, you know, speaking of um, kind of tricky draft selections this year, I'll throw one out to the audience. Um, uh, Van Jefferson, who was a receiver for the Gators. Of course, you know, you're going to Ohio State running back. I'm going to Gators receiver in terms of a value draft selection this year. Uh, but Van Jefferson was uh, a really good receiver, great route runner. He actually was a top recruit coming out of high school, went to Ole Miss, transferred to the Florida from Ole Miss, um, and uh, was a, was a, just a phenomenal wide receiver on our team this year. Um, I would have liked to have seen us he was our top receiver, but I would like to have seen us feature him even more. Um, but he is a silky smooth route runner. Um, he's just, a, I think he's going to be a long time receiver in the NFL. He was drafted by the Rams. Um, I believe he went late in round two. And I think I'll, I think I'll get a real opportunity. You know, the Rams wide receiver core was kind of shook up this off season. I think Jefferson will get a chance to get in there um, real early in the season and, uh, and hopefully impress some people. So if you're looking for a sneaky value card that, you know, very few people are going to be purchasing, um, but that could have some upside look towards Van Jefferson. That's my little tip. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you, Jeff. I mean, you, you've got Brandon cooks. I mean, all those concussions, he couldn't stay on the field. Uh, Robert Woods had a few, uh, injuries is uh, Cooper Cup just came back. He was healthy this year, but the previous year. So they can definitely use, use a weapon like Van Jefferson. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think they move some of those guys around. So they they're going to have some openings for sure. Um looking back to looking looking to some of the other players in the league, some veteran players, uh when we were talking before the show, one of the guys you mentioned was uh or in my notes here, you said that you actually think uh the Titans duo uh of um uh Tannehill and I think AJ Brown, right? Was was a what you think they're gonna be like this this newly explosive, awesome hobby, you know, hobby investment potentially? I think so. I think AJ Brown is a real deal, man. I mean Tannehill surprised everybody. Who who thought Tannehill was gonna make a comeback like that and and uh I mean lead the Titans to almost a Super Bowl. So I mean AJ Brown is a stud. I think I think they've got great chemistry very quickly. So I'm I'm investing in AJ Brown. So yeah, I you know I think I'm scarred from Tannehill's days in Miami, and I just can't quite get on the Tannehill back with bandwagon. I I will grant you he played well this year. I mean obviously he was the difference maker for Tennessee when they switched over to him from Mariota, and um, he played really well. But I don't know. I just there's something still about him and that offense. I mean, I think it's very Derrick Henry. Um, you know, uh, I think the world revolves around him a bit in that offense. And I, I just, I don't know. I agree. AJ Brown is a, he's a great looking receiver. Um, but I just, 
it just doesn't excite me the same way that it would excite me if he was on a more high octane. If he was on the Ravens, if he was on the Chiefs, if he was on a team like that, I would get more excited about A.J. Brown, but I'm just not that excited about him on the on the Titans. Maybe I'm sleeping on him. Maybe I'm sleeping on him. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see. Hopefully this uh, NFL season starts on time and and uh, we can see some of the, the studs we've hoped for. So. But a guy, a guy I do like, and it's a guy who I know you're high on as well, who I do think we are going to see this big buildup in interest this offseason and prices going up and up and up for Drew Locke. Absolutely. I mean, Drew Locke, I mean, especially adding those two weapons. And I mean, Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler. I mean, you're just adding more fuel to that, that offense. So, I mean, his cards are, are already starting to increase, but I think, I think he's going to have a fire season. Yeah, it was it, it, it the the Broncos did do him right in the draft. They did show support. They did go get and I agree with that with that happening with the full support of the organization behind him. Um I think people are going to get really excited about Drew Locke. Um you know, and there's going to be a lot of a lot of people and his cards have already gone up a lot this offseason. I mean, he's been one of the guys who's have seen his cards go up and up. But I think there's a lot of room, honestly, for those to continue to go up. I just think that the hype is really going to be there as we get closer and closer to the season. Yeah. And he's a he's a good uh, a fantasy flyer too, right? Super late rounds. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, he is probably a pretty good fantasy flyer. Um, what is the what is your favorite card that you own? Um, I have a uh, a few Zion's that I that I actually hit in a pack i've got a from a select hobby box um it's out of, I, I believe it's out of 200 it's a uh ruby red so that's one of the ones that i love i mean hopefully he stays healthy um i'm hanging on to that one and i've got another one um one of his prisms um a hollow as well so so those guys i like to i like to hang on to and and hopefully they pan out yeah um he he certainly looked impressive in the slice of the season that we got to see him yeah so, and yeah. then, and then uh, other cards, I mean, um, I, I try to collect RPAs. I love, I'm a big autograph guy. So, so I look for the, the quarterback RPAs and a few stud running backs. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, what, um, what would you say to, uh, so you've been, you've been, you got back in the hobby about a year ago, right? Is that right? A little over a year ago? And you had been you had been this um, kind of sports influencer to you know use use your word kind of sports personality sports influencer for quite some time prior to that right how long have you been doing how long have you been running in these circles and doing the ESPN stuff and the you know the just kind of having you know having built up the following that you have yeah so I mean it's been again since the Vine days but it's been about six, seven years that I've kind of just been building it and um, just kind of staying true to myself and then just just kind of letting people know what's going on in the sports world, um, kind of adding some humor to it. So, And so what what was that, um, what was kind of that moment you got back into cards and you're like, you know, you, I, you, I know you said you describe yourself as like a dedicated, passionate person, right? So when was that moment that you're like, man, I really, this has really piqued my interest and I really want to get into this. I think recently with, I mean, all the hype around, whether it's basketball guys, whether it's Ja or Zion, whether it's Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, I think just the hype around all those guys. And I mean, people love investing in their cards. So I think, I mean, just seeing those guys and just being well-versed, whether it's in watching sports or fantasy football, knowing all these guys, um, I think that's kind of what pulled me back into it. Very cool. Very cool. And what advice would you give to a newer collector, newer investor who was where you were a year ago when you're just yeah. getting back into it? What is what is one piece of advice that you would give to them to make sure that they have kind of a successful, you know, entry into the hobby? Um, I would say a, a two part here. I would say have fun, obviously, doing it. Um, and then be smart, too. Don't rush it. I mean, rushing it, some people think, okay, they get so worried. Uh, they want to try to get rid of a card, but um, just don't rush and just have as much fun as you can with the hobby. Cause I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it is. That is, that is what it is all about. And I agree. There is not a rush. And it seems one interesting thing about the hobby and about the buying and selling and the price changes. And of course I do my top five videos every week and look at this card. It went from here to here. And you, there's a constant, you have a constant feeling that you're missing out. 
And it's a it's easy to get sucked into that feeling and it's easy to kick yourself and be like, oh no, I know I should have bought that you know LeBron card last week or man, I was thinking about buying that Dak Prescott card the day before the draft and then, oh, they drafted CD Lamb and of course his prices you know went up almost double. And it's easy to always feel like to have this constant sensation of I'm missing out, I'm missing out, I'm missing out. But the truth is that sensation persists. There's always, that's kind of the grip of the hobby. There's always going to be that feeling of I'm missing out. Because if if you didn't have that feeling of I'm missing out, then that would mean that the hobby was no longer dynamic or changing or interesting or pulling in new directions or seeing new stars emerge. And what we all want is we all actually want the hobby to always give you a feeling of I'm missing out because we always want the hobby to always, we always want the sports world to always bring new stars to the forefront and always take that rookie and elevate him and always have this player win the surprising game and have the breakout game. We always want that to happen because that's what keeps the market interesting and fun and dynamic. And so I think your advice is right. Like take a breath and it's you, you, can, you can be okay missing out for a little while because you're going to have the opportunity again. And it may not be with the same guy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you, you know, if you said, yeah, I had this premonition to buy, you know, this, this player before he became big, you know, I I was going to buy Juan Soto before he was ever, you know, ever pulled up to the nationals last year or, you know, whomever. Um, Yes. You can, you can have those premonitions and those thoughts and you can have that feeling of missing out but but you've just got you got to recognize that that the next one will be there too and the next one will be there that you know the, there's always opportunities in the hobby exactly yeah and so having having fun learning what you're doing enjoying the experience i think that those are all awesome things so you're going to start a, a little bit of kind of you know uh i guess talking to your followers a little bit about the hobby, right? Like you're you're going to start sharing, it sounds like a little bit of your excitement with your followers. Have you done any of that yet? Have you, had, you know, shared any of your sports card love with your followers up to this point? Um, I've done a little bit. Uh, I've actually worked with a few um, box breakers, but I kind of want to get in that myself. Uh, I think that's pretty fun. I think I think people love w- whether it's watching breaks or, or getting into it. But um, I think, I think, I'm going to get more into that. I do have a, a separate uh, account for just my cards, um, but I'd like to actually leverage my own account and kind of bring those followers in that are just strictly sports card investors, sports card collectors, and kind of share some of that content as well. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Break, breaking is a lot of fun. I get to do it. I do it for my members once a month. Uh, and actually starting in May, we're doing it twice a month um, as part of my uh, membership program. It's not a, it's, it's just a free break that I do for my members. It's not a break where people pay slot, you know, pay for slots or anything like that. Uh, but the experience of doing it's a lot of fun. Then the aftermath of doing it is a lot of work where you've got to package up all the cards and you got to ship them off. And that's just me giving all the cards away for free to my members, you know? And I talked to, I've talked to a number of breakers who, do it professionally and they're like they're like yes it is fun but <laughs> you know the 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 few hours that you get to hang out with people at night opening up sports cards is then followed by many more hours of sorting and shipping and dealing with customer service issues and 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 dealing with you know who gets what card and resolving customer issues all that stuff and so you know um you know, it's, there, there's, it's, it's, it's a business. It's just like any other business. It's, you know, there's a lot to running it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of people invest a lot of time in it. I know, I know a few breakers that I mean are on daily for nine hours, busting hundreds of boxes. So it's, it's very time consuming. Yeah. But you can also make a lot of money with it right now. Um, you know, right now is a good time, although it's very hard to get product. That's the complaint that new breakers always have is that it's just very difficult for them to get product. Um, so, um, well, anyway, I, I wish you the best. I hope if I hope if you do get into the breaking world, certainly let us know about that and we'll definitely check it out for sure. Um, and uh, it will be interesting to see uh, if you can bring some of your audience over into the sports card world because it's uh, hopefully you can get some of them hooked uh, just yeah. as uh, you and I have on this whole thing. Absolutely. Hey, Brandon, it was really cool to have you on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Likewise. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And I guess, I guess go Browns. (laughs) We'll see. We'll see.
<laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. I'm not going to sell my Baker Mayfield cards yet. I actually don't own any Baker Mayfield cards, but if I owned any Baker Mayfield cards, I would not sell them yet. Go get some. Go get some. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Take care. All right, thanks, Jeff. All right. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Brandon Zingali. Go find him on Instagram. Give him a follow. He has 524,000 followers. Impressive as heck. Uh, his He is Brandon Zingali on Instagram. B-R-A-N-D-O-N. Zingali is Z-I-N-G-A-L-E. On Instagram, give him a follow and... Remember, my card break is coming this Wednesday for my members, so please give my membership program a follow as well by going to sportscardinvestor.com and clicking on the membership link in the main menu bar. I would love to have you in as part of my membership to do this break of the mosaic and all of these awesome cards that we're going to be breaking on Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining me on your Sunday. If you have not yet, give the show a subscribe. Click the little bell icon to be notified of new episodes. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. I truly do. And I'll see you back in a couple of days for my next episode. Take care.